Hi everybody, welcome to uh, Rehab with You, episode 2, sh shoulders, hands and arms. So I just want to say to start with, I've been so overwhelmed and so grateful for all the lovely feedback I've had on the first video um, on the head and neck. Um, I've, I've been really been blown away with it, like thank you so much. I wasn't expecting it to be so popular or, or people to find it so useful, so I'm really glad that you're finding it useful and I hope you continue to find these videos helpful. Um, like I say, any burning questions, drop me a line, I'll try to answer it as best I can. Um, I actually got some questions about um, some neck stretching after the first video, so I'll start tonight's video um, with a little stretch for the neck, which actually leads in quite well to the shoulder work we're going to discuss. Um, so yeah, I just, I just hope you keep finding these helpful and informative, and like I say, if there's anything you want to add or want to know, just drop me a line and I'll do my best to add it in, just like I will with this neck stretch. So tonight, um, we've got Sid again, he's going to be our dummy for this evening, and the sort of gadgets and gizmos that we're kind of going to use tonight. Um, we have rolled up bath pillow, that you can use that instead of a foam roller. Um, I've also got this like half plank device, not really sure what you call this, but that's quite helpful. Um, instead of a foam roller or a bath pillow. Um, got a little rolled up hand towel, broom handle, you know, she's golf club, spiky ball, tennis ball or Franklin ball, it's up to you what you want to use. And I've got a trusty teaspoon and my butter knife. Again, not sponsored by any products, these are just products I quite like to use. So before we start on the shoulder stuff, I'm just going to quickly show you this little neck stretch because it's actually quite lovely. So it's got three, it's got two progressions from, from the from the offset. The first part you want to do is if we're doing the left side of your neck, you're going to take your right ear towards your right shoulder and just gently bend it off like that. You can dangle there 10, 20, 30 seconds, see how comfortable it feels. You can then, at the end of whatever your preferred time is, take the arm of the side you've bent to. So in this case, we're stretching the left side, right ear to right shoulder, right arm up and over, and just give your head a nice little cuddle. Well done, you're doing really well in self-isolation right now. And you're just gonna let the weight of your arm lie on your head. And it looks a bit daft, but believe me, it's, it's a lovely stretch. So again, 10, 20, 30 seconds, see what best works for you. And then the next progression to that is a really, really subtle, Tilt, further tilt of your head using the weight of your atom towards that right side. With this spare left hand, what you can then do is just gently walk it all the way down towards your knee. And that just opens that up a little bit further. You can do that to both sides. So just do it to comfort level. If you're getting dizzy, come out of it, just be safe. So moving on to shoulders, hands and arms. I'm not gonna lie, shoulder's not my favourite joint of the body. I'm more of a jaw and foot kind of gal. Uh, shoulder's really, really complicated. Bit of a design flaw, really. Um, it is super mobile, which is good, because it means we can do so many things with it. You know, you can bring your arm way straight up, way out the back, off to the side, across your body. You can do circles with it. It's, it's, it's great that we have so much movement in it, but because we have so much movement in it, it's a very unstable joint. And that's not great because it can lead to having so many problems. It's really unusual for you to break a shoulder. You would have to be like involved in a really traumatic fall, really traumatic road to traffic collision. Um, most likely you're gonna dislocate this bad boy in here, this humerus. Um, but that's just because it's just so mobile. Basically, like I say it's a design flaw, the actual head of the humerus, so the top of your shoulder, or the top of your arm bone coming into your shoulder is actually too big for this joint in here. And that's why it can quite easily pop out. So basic shoulder anatomy, 17 muscles make this guy move. That is a lot of opportunities for things to go wrong. And so when people come in and they say, oh, I have a shoulder problem, a cold sweat drops down my back a little bit because it can just be so many different things that are causing it. You can also have problems from the neck coming into it. Um, so yeah, it's just, just a lot to go through to get it right. 
You've also got four joints. So I'll run through them first and we'll go through the muscles. So kind of going from medial side of the body laterally, you've got your sternoclavicular joint. So basically where your collarbone inserts into your breastbone. You then have your acromioclavicular joint, which is basically where your clavicle comes onto your scapula. You then have your glenohumeral joint, so you can see that there, where your humerus, so your arm bone, comes into the into the shoulder blade, or articulates the other shoulder blade. And then you kind of have this pseudo joint on the back, where basically your shoulder blade is interacting and articulating with all, all, this, all these ribs and all the muscles at the back of the shoulder. So people aren't always aware that there's, there's muscles and, and stuff going on behind that shoulder blade that can also cause you a lot of dysfunction. Um, so again, if people maybe have break an upper rib or they crack a rib um, through contact sport or like a road traffic collision or like I've done in the past, I had bronchitis and sinusitis at the same time and I coughed and sneezed so much that I cracked a couple of ribs and that can cause a lot of shoulder dysfunction, particularly if it's upper ribs and, and it's, it's upsetting that scapulothoracic sort of pseudo joint in there. Um, so just a quick rhyme off the 17 muscles that affect your shoulder. Some of you will know if you go to the gym a lot, I'm sure there'll be ones there that you've not heard of, but just to give you a brief overview of kind of what's going on here and why it's so complicated. Um, you've got deltoid, supraspinatus, corobotrachialis, lats, pec minor, teres major, teres minor, biceps, triceps, infraspinatus, subscapularis, traps, left scap, rhomboids major, rhomboids minor, serratus anterior, and omohyoid, which is actually a muscle in the front of your neck that interacts with this little hyoid bone that we spoke about in the head and neck uh, video. So like I say, other than sort of breaking some ribs or cracking some ribs, being involved in shoulder dysfunction, we can break the collar, collarbone, clavicle, again, slip, trip, fall, contact sport, road traffic collision, um, that can cause a lot of shoulder dysfunction later on, even when it's better. Slip, trip, fall, we can dislocate this humerus, not great. Um, and you can also have brachial plexus entrapment, which can be a problem from the neck, or it can be a problem through all of this being super tight, all this muscular being, musculature being super tight. So brachial plexus um, is basically a collection of nerve endings that come down your neck <coughs> and spread out across the upper body um, to control the arms and hands and wrists and, and it, uh, there's blood vessels there as well. So if any of this musculature gets really really tight or damaged it will then start impinging on these blood vessels and nerves and that can then start having issues further down the chain. So you can have issues with brachial plexus compression too which is not what we want. So we'll do some techniques tonight to try and open up all that anterior shoulder joint. Moving further down the chain, I'm just going to dislocate Sid's arm so you can see this a little bit better. <clears throat> we almost kind of go from bad to worse in complexity levels. So the shoulder joint had 14, uh, excuse me, 14 um, joints. The elbow has three joints. Now, so many people just think, oh, it's my elbow. But actually, there are three different joints. So they all have, they have three completely different functions. So you have um, your humerus coming onto your radius, so humeral radial joint. You have your humerus coming onto your ulnar joint, so humeral ulnar joint. And then you also have a joint between the, the radius and ulnar here. So the humeral radial joint is a gliding joint the humeral ulnar joint is a pivot joint <laughs> and then the radial ulnar, sorry, the humeral ulnar joint is a hinge joint, the humeral radial joint is a gliding joint and the radial ulnar is a pivot joint. So a lot more complicated than just opening and closing like I think a lot of people think it does. 
And a big problem with um, elbows that I see in clinic is actually that the radius gets too, like almost gets too far stuck into the joint, which sounds a bit daft, but basically there should be space for this little condyle of your humerus to articulate on that radius. And unfortunately, whether it's, again, you've had a slip, trip, fall, and you've kind of had a shunt up the way because you put your hand out to stop yourself falling or to stop your hurting yourself. When that gets pushed up into the joint, or um, try to think maybe if you're a golfer and there's quite a lot of um, congestion around there because of all of the rotation, what can happen is this little bone kind of goes into the joint too much. And then suddenly when you try to bend and straighten your elbow, you can't because you're not getting such good articulation there. Um, and that can cause a lot of pain. And I actually see that quite a lot um, in clinic. So I've got a technique to show you tonight to try and wiggle that little bone from out here to back here. And a way you can find it is um, when you palpate around your own elbow, you should be able to feel a little bit of space which I can't find, which means I probably have an issue in that joint. Yeah, it's quite closed off in there. So you should be able to, almost just from the point your elbow, just up a little bit, there should be a tiny little bit of space you should be able to feel into um, between those two bones. And I actually don't have that, but I probably need to do a little bit of work on that. Um, my elbows are quite bendy. Yeah, I have space on this side. So um, yeah, I need to do a little bit of work on my left elbow. So I'm finding interesting stuff about myself doing these videos. Um, so yeah, that can cause a lot of pain. Just try to bend a straight in your elbow. It can be quite burny. Um, and it's just, there's too much um, aggravation between the two bones because they're not articulating properly. Um, like I say, oh, just, just a complicated joint. Um, yeah, 17, 17 muscles in the shoulder are affecting the shoulder. There's eight muscles affect your elbow. Um, which again is quite a lot of muscles for a tiny little bit area and then it gets even more complicated when we come to the hand so um, again eight muscles affecting the elbow you've got brachialis, biceps, brachioradialis, triceps, and conius, supinator, pronator teres and pronator quadratus um, so yeah just quite a few different things can go wrong there too um, and then coming down to the hand and wrist we have a lot of joints <laughs> and this is a joint but your radius forms joints with these two little bones, these carpal bones and all these little carpal bones have joints with each other and these little carpal bones have joints with these metacarpal bones and these metacarpal bones have joints with your phalanges and your phalanges have joints within themselves. So. A hand is not just a hand, and again, ma a bit like the jaw, massively overworked area of the body every single day. Driving, writing, typing, texting. Texting is crippling people's hands and wrists, and I do believe that we're going to see a huge increase in carpal tunnel issues as the, the years roll on, just with generations of people being brought up texting all the time. Um, and that whole, this whole area on here being closed off because you're, you're flexed. Um, and, and deviated at your wrists all the time. Um, so I'm going to show you some techniques tonight to try and open open all this out. Um, but yeah, carpal tunnel, not a nice thing if you get it. And basically what's happening with something like carpal tunnel is that this whole area, um, there's not a lot of space in it. Um, there's all those little bones. It's quite congested. I mean, my wrists are not are not the biggest. There's, there's not a lot of space here for things to go wrong. So you've got to remember that this is literally just like bare bones I'm showing you. So you've got to think that you have all the sort of muscles I've just mentioned from the elbow coming down. You then all you then all have the muscles of the hands and arm, the, the hand and wrist coming down and into the fingers. Um, then you've got blood vessels and all the, the nerves too. So if any of this gets congested and tight, it just squeezes on all that area. And that's what carpal tunnel is, just that little tunnel is getting too, too squeezed and you'll start getting pain and weakness um, and lack of sensation in the hand and that, that's not great. It's quite a common problem in pregnancy um, just with um, weight gain and, and fluid um, retention. Generally, once pregnant, ladies um, have their baby though 
uh, the carpal tunnel sensation generally goes away. Um, sometimes it can come back, um, but you definitely want to go get it checked out. Um, there's definitely some techniques we can do in clinic to help with it, but you definitely want to go see your GP and get it looked at, um, just to make sure it doesn't have any other complications further down the line. So, that's kind of like a brief overview, overview of shoulders, hands and arms. So, now I'm going to try and show you guys how to treat it at home. For my first couple of techniques, so um, I'm just going to pop my top off just so you can get a better look at what's going on. Then I'll pop it back on for the other ones that you don't need to see quite so much. I just want you to see exactly kind of where we're targeting so that you can do this as, as effectively as you can when you're at home. So I'll just go get my stuff and we can get cracking. So the first kind of stuff I want to show you is how to open up all this um, clavicle collarbone area and all through the front of this um, shoulder and then we'll, we'll work through the rest of the hand and arm um, but I just want to show you this so that you can get a proper a proper view of what's going on. So like I say we did that really nice lovely neck stretch to open everything out to start with. What you can then follow that up with is um, doing a Mackenzie stretch like I showed you the last time where you're lying flat on the bed, shimmy yourself to the end, dangle your neck off the end, a little rotation 10 times, set yourself back up. You can then follow off with some more lovely Franklin ball work. So um, all the way through anterior lateral neck, down across your chest, <clears throat> just to start opening pec and all that up. Because a big thing I get asked about in clinic all the time is tension through shoulder blades. Um, and that being a really congested and dysfunctional area too. And actually, the thoracic spine is a symptom that's actually usually the pec, pec major, pec minor, um, and too much forward posture. So typing, texting, driving, that's restricting all this, tightening everything up and massively over lengthening through that thoracic spine. So if you can take the tension out the front here and drop that back, your thoracic spine will be a little bit happier with you and hopefully not um, not as grumbly. So like I say, Franklin ball, work all the way through the chest. You can work it right across the anterior shoulder joint. You can like I say, go up into the up into the neck too. Um, then I get my little butter knife. You got your trusty teaspoon. Again, with or without wax, it depends on how um, dry your skin is. Um, I'm not going to use any wax tonight, but you can use baby oil, olive oil, a little bit of wax, facial moisturiser, facial cleanser, whatever you got kicking about. And basically what you want to do is a little fanning, a little fanning motion just across that anterior shoulder just to help open it up a little bit. So just off the edge of your collarbone is where you want to start and you just want to fan down from there and across. And you can work that into the arm if you like and you can come right across your chest just following the line of that collarbone and all the way down and you can do that to both sides what you can then do is again depends on how dry your skin is if you want a little bit of wax or not fingers start just past dear do barlow so you can see dear do barlow in here just from the head and neck video and you can just gently work along that collarbone with your finger. You'll probably find there's quite a lot of little yucky bits in there, all those little myofascial adhesions um, and you'll probably find it feels like a little bump that you're going over. So eventually if you kind of keep working at it those little bumps should start to disappear but they're not very nice to work over in the meantime I'm afraid. So you can do the top side of the collarbone, and then you can do the underside of the collarbone, so the inferior side. So again, you can see where my dear do Barlow is inserting onto my sternum. So just come off the side of dear do Barlow, so your sternocleidoxyphomastoid, and work along the underside of the collarbone, just to the edge, just where it comes into your shoulder. And again, you can do the other side too. And that's just a way of getting that all kind of mobilized up. And then the last one I'm going to show you for your collarbone 
is a nice little almost like a pulsing sensation is what you want to do so you can use two fingers or four fingers on the same side I quite like doing two on each side and what you want to do is like almost pulse onto that collarbone and just try to mobilize it so if I show you on set <coughs> what you're effectively trying to do is just drop it a little bit you can get a lot of stickiness and congestion between the collarbone on the sternum end and collarbone on the scapular end so all you're trying to do is just give it a little wiggle body's actually quite like wiggles wiggles like a nice little um, movement for it and you're basically just trying to give it a little mobilization to clear out any rubbish that's blocking at either end so like I say you can do the same on that side so once you've kind of got that all opened up and, and starting to move a little bit better you're going to go grab your room handle or your golf club and make this look really easy don't panic if you can't do it if you keep working at it you'll be able to build it up to the mobility that I have I actually don't like I'm that mobile, I just think my shoulders are really bendy, but don't freak out. I'm going to show you in this plane and then from the side so you can understand what, what's going on here. So with your room handle, I've got my hands at either end and, and really this is, this is all about flexibility. So the better you get at it, the further in your hand should get whilst you're moving it. So I'll just start at the outside just for you to see. Like I say, you can use this as a golf club too. Um, what you want to do is just keep yourself nice and still. Bring your arms up and over and onto, touch your back and forwards and back. And it's a really nice chest opener, it's really good for getting those clavicles rolling. Don't panic if you can't do it. I just don't want you to move when you're doing it. So I don't want you kind of throwing yourself back. Just stay as still as you can and do some nice shoulder rolls. The, the more mobile you become and all these little yuckies get like kind of buffed away, you can bring your hands a little bit further in and that makes it a little bit more intense. And you can keep walking your hands in and keep walking them in. About here is when I start to struggle a little bit, it's getting a little bit tighter across, just kind of across here and into my um, bicep a little bit. Um, and now I'm kind of struggling about here. So even if you only get into here and your hands are way out the side, that's okay. Just work at it and it'll like get a little bit easier. So that's a really nice um, little opener too for, for all that chest area. And you'll start to find that all of this starts to ease off a little bit and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be quite as niggly as what you've been experiencing. So again, trusty, trusty Franklin Ball. You can start to use a tennis ball, I'll show a tennis ball for, for the hand, but Franklin ball all the way through biceps and then on to triceps. You can do a little bit lat as well, that little bit of the side, that little meaty bit, but we're going we're gonna to show you how to roll through that in a second. All the way through there, what you can do is um hand on the ball and work your hand through it that's really really nice for the hand use it with a tennis ball too doing that um if you want to work triceps with the ball just rest your arm on the ball and roll along the length of your arm. That's that's actually quite a nice one. I'm going to show you on the bed because then I'm going to show you um, how you can use a foam roller with it um, and do some little techniques with that foam roller or the ball um, just to open up your tricep a little bit more and then down through into that. Unfortunately, shoulder, hand, and arm is not quite as free flowing as head and neck. It's quite easy to do anterior and posterior side the head and neck not quite so easy with um with hands arms shoulders so <clears throat> like say if you want to you want to do tricep um you can just hunker onto the ball and roll through it that's a really really nice little technique um you can use a tennis ball spiky ball it's not, it doesn't really matter um <laughs> excuse me i'm going to use a spiky ball just because it's a little bit bigger to show you this um 
lat and tricep stuff, but you can also use a foam ruler too. So when you do this lying on the floor, and basically what you want to do is this little meaty bit, this little meaty bit at the side of your shoulder. Just, just give it a grab and a little wiggle so you know what you're trying to work on. And what you want to do is lie the ball, tennis ball, frank ball, spiky ball, foam roller on that meaty bit. It should be quite uncomfortable. You'll find bits that are more uncomfortable than others will be little yucky hot spots. So just sink into it 20, 30 seconds and then you can just do some nice gentle arm rotations. You can then sort of roll across it. You can then roll along it. And that's a really, really good one for people who complain about all this sort of tension that through their thoracic spine. That's a really, really nice opener. Um, quite a good one for golfers actually. Um, they're doing a lot of rotation. Um, quite a good one for runners too. Um, arm, arm drive. Lats have a really um, important connection to your pelvis. So any sort of pelvic dysfunction can start having a shoulder lat dysfunction. Shoulder lat dysfunction can give you a bit of pelvic dysfunction. dysfunction. So have a go with spiky ball all up through there. And then just to kind of show you it with, foam roller, zigzag so you just want to find find the yucky bit, roll through it, you can move your arm with it, just find the different bits, you can raise it up and raise it down, sweep it forward, just play around with it, just experiment with it, I've got quite a little yucky bit in there that I should probably do some work on, and um, what you can do is just let, let the weight of your body sink into it, and, and try and like almost use it like an acupressure, and see how you find that as opposed to moving it. Some people find moving it a little bit more helpful, some people find pinning stretch, but just pinning it is a little bit more helpful. So play about, see what works for you. Um, oh yeah, cool. Right, I'm gonna put my top back on. No, no need for it to be off anymore. So a little one about the elbow. It's a really, really good one. Again, this is great if you've had a slip trip fall recently or um, if you're desk bound. So little hand towel rolled up. So again, it's kind of a little bit like collarbone. You want to do almost like a pulse in action with it. So crook your elbow, towel in there. Just bend your elbow and all you want to do is just a really gentle pulse of that arm towards you and what you're basically excuse me trying to do is just gently open up all that elbow capsule it's a really nice little technique it's really really simple you just find a light nice little gentle stretch all through that further to that you can get your teaspoon I've got my little butter knife you can do some really nice work all around there just like in a nice gentle scraping motion you know, scraping and gentle should probably not be in the same sentence, but that's really nice to work all around there. What you can also do is from your elbow, you'll be able to find like a sort of gully between the bone and the tissue. All that gully there, and then all this gully down this side. Get your trusty teaspoon and work through that gully. Now the sort of... Um, I guess the technique, if you were fanning up here, you could fan across here, but I almost think it's like peeling potatoes. You're almost doing like a peel and tatties action. You're sort of peeling this, the tissue towards, towards you as if you were making tatties or peeling tatties. And then you can do the same on that side of the gully. Then if you want to do some tricep bicep stretching, a really nice little bicep stretch which is actually really good for wrist um, extensors too because we do so much wrist flexion, typing, driving, texting. Our, our hands never really go that way unless you're going to save yourself from a fall. So a nice little biceps wrist extensor stretch is on a unit, whether it's kitchen table, kitchen worktop, table, desk, whatever, is turn your hand away from you. So your fingers are pointing towards you. Keep the palm of your hand on the unit and all you want to do is just gently lean back 
whilst keeping your hands on the unit. You get a lovely stretch to that whole front of the forward arm. If you want to involve a little bit more bicep, it will be getting your bicep, but to just get a little bit more, you can just push the shoulder forward whilst keeping the weight on the back of this hand and that you'll still keep getting that lovely stretch through here, but it just gets a little bit more biceps involvement. Then to the opposite of that, do your tricep. You wanna, if you're doing the right side, take right hand up and over to middle of shoulder blades. Spare hand, take it onto your elbow and just gently push it back. And you'll get a nice lovely stretch through there too. What you can then do is start doing like a resisted technique. So once you're holding that position, you can try and push this elbow forward whilst you use this hand to stop it, stop it basically. And that's really, really nice for that too. And that goes really well with the foam rolling up all that lat because lats and triceps have a, a really strong connection. So those are good to work, work together as well. And kind of last to finish off is the hand. So like I kind of showed you earlier with your hand working its way through the ball, get your trusty teaspoon or your butter knife. And what you want to do is work across the palm and through each of the fingers. And I promise you, your hand will feel like it, it doesn't even belong to you afterwards. It's, it's a really, really lovely technique to do. So again, it's almost like a peel and tatties um, type technique. That's as scientific as I can word it. Um, like I say, I try to keep these fairly casual. I don't, I don't want to pickle people's brains when they're self-isolating. Um, but yeah, you're basically just working over this whole palmer side of the hand. And, and it, it's really like peel and tie. So it's, it's, it, that's as scientific as I can say it. Um, you'll probably feel and hear when you do it to yourself. Lots of little popping going on. And that's just all these little yucky adhesions that are gathering because we're too, doing too much sitting, driving, texting, typing. Um, so that's really, really nice to work, work all through that. You can then dig in that gentle scraping action through all your fingers, all the sides. And like, take, take your time doing it. You know, we've got a lot of weeks in self-isolation, so <laughs> hopefully not too many, but we've got at least three to get ourselves through first. So um, like I say, just go through every joint. So like, for example, in your pointer finger, you have a joint here, you have a joint here, you have a joint here, but there's two sides to that joint. So just do a little bit of concentrating across there and then do some under there and work through each side of the joint. You can also go across the top, underneath. Like I promise you, your hand will feel like it doesn't belong to you once you do it, if you work through, work through all that. You can also just do some really nice gentle, gentle wrist stuff too, working through all that. You might find it's a teeny little bit tingly, so just lay off a little bit, just coming through that carpal tunnel area. But um, yeah, just just work work all through that, and um, yeah, you can let me know how your hands feel after that, because it is actually a really lovely technique. Um, your hands feel really, really open after it. And then the sort of last thing I want to show you, because I know I'm kind of starting to ramble on a little bit now, is nice little finger stretches, um, where you basically, if this was a unit, Take your finger under the unit you're not trying to move the unit you literally just want to push fairly gently you're you almost won't feel it moving that's how kind of gentle i want it to be just gently push your finger up through and let it go when you want to do that sort of three to five times on each one and work through your fingers and then do your thumb and that's a really nice stretch to the top of your hand because we just get we just get so stuck in that sort of position that it's quite nice to open up all three of these so that was a little bit more disordered than the first one. Sorry about that. It's just kind of the nature of the of the area we're working in. But hopefully you find something helpful from there. And like I say, if you've got any questions, um, let me know and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. So thank you so much again for watching um, Rehab with CO, Shoulders, Hands and Arms. And I'll see you next week for some abdominal and back stuff. Thank you. Bye.